Greetings, adventurers, and welcome to the Adventure Incorporated Podcast. I am your Dungeon Master. My name is Anthony Reed. This is episode 42, and it is the second episode of the Twist of Fate story arc. I want to give a shout out to our patrons, patreon.com slash adventure inc. You know, without the patrons, would we do the show? Yeah, I've said that before. You know, the show is a free thing. We'll always probably do the show. But the patrons have allowed us to do so many cool things, like our tavern nights at twitch.tv slash srsbiz underscore network. You'll hear a mention of those this episode, uh, and you should come and join us on those every third Thursday at 8 p.m. on Twitch. It's uh, some more bonus uh, Adventure Incorporated content. It's, you know, semi-canon. There's cool characters. There's all kinds of stuff you're going to love if you love the show. So come and join us there. The shows are up for two weeks afterward uh, on demand to watch the video. It's totally worth it. So come and check that out. And those only exist because of the Patreon. Patrons. And so again, big thank you to them. If you aren't a patron, you should head over to patreon.com slash adventure inc. You should become a patron. And uh, if not, head to our discord and give them a thank you. I've sent you three places this episode. All right, there's three, just three chief places to go. And here's the fourth place because you can find links to all of that stuff at adventureinkpod.com. You can find links to the discord. You can find links to uh, the Patreon. You can find links to the shop. You can find links to the world guide and you can find links. Yes, indeed to our Twitch. So head over there. You can see everything you need to see from one convenient location. So, so convenient episodes. Also, I guess if you're not, if you're listening to this episode, I feel like you probably have access to the episodes, but you know, pretend you want to show someone i guess you could please do that also you yeah all right i think this is i think you get my point right you get where i'm going with this uh so why don't we get started Nobles and farmers, knights and scoundrels, gather round, gather round to hear a tale of excitement and mystery. Brave adventurers facing grave dangers. Billroth, the ranger. She's a grimalkin, that's, uh, but that's understood. No pets allowed, even though she's not a pet. I will wait outside. Everyone, if anyone needs anything, I am outside. Scarpin, the cleric. Should I just try and snipe them from over here? Yeah, okay. I did say they were as good as dead. I would hate for my, you know, to break my word on our first contract as Adventure Incorporated. Ellery, the bard. We would want you to leave this warehouse. He points behind him. Mm -hmm. Church! Oh, sorry. We want you to leave this church. Deerin, the wizard. He say you no worship Shattered Fang. Yeah, man, he's like super wrong. We love Broken Tooth, uh, Shattered Fang, man. Prepare yourselves, for these are the tales of Adventure Incorporated. You have uh, two days in this city before uh, you will know if you are going to be rewarded or not. Uh, what do you want to do with those two days? Everyone at once. Everyone at once. Tell me what you want to do with those two days. One, two, three, go. Library. I'm going to go with Belroth to the Adventure Incorporated broker and send a letter. Yeah, Darren's going to make sure uh, as Belroth is writing the letter, like he's going to stand over him with a beer and be like, oh, don't forget to tell him how cool this part was, uh. man. <laughs> and like, I imagine Belroth does not do nope. any of that. Never uh. once. <laughs> All right, I, fine. Well, I feel like Belroth would drop that off and then, like, for the rest of the two days would go um, to the library. And there's no... You said there's no, like, teachings of Diem place at all that I know of? Yeah, there doesn't appear to be, although, you know, He's looking it's for, pretty rare. Sure. He's definitely looking for some spiritual guidance, so he might... If if Scarpin goes to a temple of sorts, he might follow. Um, He doesn't. Uh, okay. He doesn't. He goes to an adventure shop to see what he can buy with his gold someday. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Are you going to make me generate you a shop just to browse? <laughs> it's your game, man. <laughs> you don't find one, asshole. <laughs> Wait, I have a question. Yeah. If you generate this shop, will it still have the same inventory when we get paid? No. Okay, then don't. 
I'm staying there until we get paid. <laughs> you what assume you'll that? get paid. Yeah, we do yeah. assume. That's right. It's a big assumption. It's a big if. Apparently, uh, you can just ask for rewards, I guess. Like, <laughs> this is exciting. <laughs> hey, we did some cool <laughs> shit. <laughs> yes. You guys have never tried before, so, you know, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Here you go, Mikey. I've generated you a shop. For literally today. Uh, so, well, here's what we'll do. We'll say, so, uh, Steph wants to spend time with her parents, uh, or Ellery wants to spend time with her parents. Um, I mean, I would take time with my parents, me, Stephanie. I would take some time with them. I mean, you can do that if you want. I just probably won't record it. Uh, <laughs> feels like it would be <laughs> weird. It's good content. <laughs> Very yeah, intrusive. It's always good content. Uh, and then... We'll say that uh, Belroth's going to head to a library. Scarpin, you're going to head to an adventure shop. And uh, Deeran, what did you ultimately <gasps> settle on for your two days? <laughs> Sorry, I just saw a cool I item. At I shop. saw a really cool item. Uh, you can't. You're a, not there. Sorry, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> I hope there's a flying broom in this shop, but Mikey can't afford it. That's what I hope. <laughs> um, there's not. Yeah, Deeran... <sighs> Library sounds so boring, and Deeran doesn't want to crash Ellery's like family party. Uh, she would absolutely let you. No question. Yeah. So uh, pre like pre everybody heading out, uh, Deeran like when they're talking about it, Deeran's like, oh, I don't know, I've never been here before. Uh, what's cool to see here, Ellery? Like, what are the? Oh, I've I've never been because I've never had my big girl success pants on. Deeran looks down, uh, and he's like, "Those are it." Well, I think I think she meant him metaphorically because I had never like done something really successful in my life, so we never come to the capital. Because she said that you know coming to the capital is really only worthy of like when you've done something really good. Oh, that makes okay. Uh, so I don't know, but you're more than welcome to come see my parents with me if you want to. Yeah, no, no offense, Bella. Everyone Rock. is. Mm-hmm. Uh, no offense, man. I just, uh, you know how I get like pretty squidgy in a oh, library. Oh, I, I, I never expected for you to join me. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I would, I would have gladly had you join me, but like, I, this isn't the first time we've had the opportunity to go to a library, and you were like, no. So I never had any. <laughs> yeah. in, in, that's totally fine. Go have fun with Ellery. If it's, like, if it's a cool looking library or whatever, like if there's, uh, I mean, if there's like art in the library will you let me know uh so that maybe on day like day two i can go pop by and like see what see what's um, up sh- uh sure cool <laughs> yeah like uh, just if there's like cool stuff to see i mean it's uh, a library you know, there's well, lots of cool things to see but i mean that's fine beside the books yeah well, there's like, picture books dear and i mean i don't know what do you want from me i can read <laughs> well man. you're the one who doesn't want to go to the library i don't <laughs> you're asking me to tell you about pictures <laughs> All right. So while this conversation <laughs> happens and before they all head out, I guess uh, Scarpin's already gone. He's at the adventure shop. So uh, we'll handle this. Uh, uh, Scarpin, you head into the adventure shop. Uh, um, it's called the, uh, the the Grandest Blade. And uh, yeah, the, the person behind the counter as you walk in, um, she looks up at you. She smiles very broadly. Uh, she is an elf. And she has uh, long, long brown hair like that's scraping against the floor in its braid. Um, and she says, welcome, welcome. Ah, oh, hey, hello there. Oh, you have quite a nice shop here. I'm happy to take a look around. Of course, of course. If there's anything that uh, catches your eye, please let me know and I would be happy to uh, assist you. Yeah, thank you, thank you. And uh, Miss Garvin's going to kind of casually just look at a bunch of stuff, but then uh, say, oh, you know, before before I get too far along, I, wa- I uh, wanted to, uh, you know, just give my condolences. There, there seems to be a lot going on in this area with the demon isles and the demon scourge of the land. Um, how has it been affecting your, your business? Well, it's there's been some difficulty, no doubt. Um, harder to uh no one from the aisles coming in has been uh has made trading a little bit harder uh, but there's still good supply coming from the uh 
from the mainland, and so I get regular uh, turnovers in my inventory, and there's quite a few adventurers down here trying to get their hands on a big spellstone score. You know, the, there's more and more of it being found in the mountains, and if they can, uh, you know, pull out a big haul from the mountain, that's that's worthwhile to them. So we still get a fair number of adventurers, and they're dangerous in the mountains to try and, and fight out through there alone. So, uh, you know, it's good. It's pretty good turnover. Sure. Oh, that's great to hear. That's great to hear. I, uh, w- w- my group and I, uh, the Expedition Society of Sudden Secrets, we have been traveling and we've actually been spearheading the, the combating the de- the demons here. So I'm I'm in your shop actually to supply up and uh, see if I can gather some assistance from the local townsfolk. No oh, tests, huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's correct. He said Tess, huh? <laughs> That's <complete. laughs> yep. Got it. Yep. That's savage. That's, that's what I said. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Scar- Scarpin, not great with branding, apparently. <laughs> um. Yeah, well, it's a Tess, Tessa. I think that you mispronounced it there, but uh, um, so. Uh, ah, okay. <laughs> the A in secrets is silent. <laughs> it's a secret A. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. Um, so we're uh, hoping to get uh, some. Uh, assistant from the town folk on this 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 terrible terrible problem that I'm glad it hasn't affected your business so far. But uh, a few towns over, uh, they were actually almost destroyed from within. So uh, we're hoping to get some honestly some help from the town shops and uh, discounts and uh, gifts, if you will, to to fund our adventure. The door opens. Uh, and in comes, uh, a large, well, I mean, like a human, right? He's a regular size human, uh, but he's a, a bard. You can tell by the instrument strapped to his back. Um, and, uh, the person behind the counter, she says, oh, well, uh, maybe Cornelius could help you. Uh, this is one of, uh, the great talents of our area. This is Cornelius Marcon. Uh, Cornelius, this is one adventurer from Tess. Uh, oh. Uh, and uh, Cornelius uh, sees you and he uh, bows to you and he says, why, hello. Yes, I am Cornelius Marcon and I am a a great uh, traveler of of the roads and teller of tales. As uh, as she has pointed out, I have a great deal of information that I might uh, impart upon you. Have you heard that the Demon Isles have come under assault? And that there is a a great disturbance spreading its way across the empire. I was just telling the shopkeep here, and I'm I'm so sorry, I I didn't catch your name. Ah, Cornelius, Cornelius Marcon. There, shopkeep, I I didn't catch your name. Uh, Oh, (laughs) I I, hardly uh, a figure of of import here, but um, my name is Tess. That's why I was so interested in your group name. Oh, wow, that's interesting. So, Cornelius. uh, (laughs) Cornelius, I was telling Tess all about the demons and how terrible they've been uh, scourging the land. Uh, So I'm glad you're here to to, uh, second my my, my description. Yes, yes, it has been a talk amongst many across the empire as I've been uh, traveling these many months. So I think it, uh, a reasonable uh, demon hunter uh, discount is, is in store, isn't that? Is, uh, what do you think, Tess? Uh, oh, no, no, that would not be uh, wise at all. No, soon it will be all of us who must face the demon scourge to give a discount to any who would walk in and uh, try and facing the demon threat. Well, that would be a, a poor business decision indeed. Uh, I worry that we're not, we won't be able to suit up accordingly. Um, this is a very expensive endeavor we're undertaking, so your shop might be in ruins here soon. 
Well, that seems unlikely. I mean, all we'll need adventurers who are of, uh, you know, the, the right stock will be in to uh, purchase things. I have no doubt, Tess. No, no fear there. Uh, and indeed, it is important for us to support our businesses. Local business is the cornerstone of the Empire. Without it, it would simply fold. And if we don't properly support those who are providing and outfitting our uh, adventuring uh, selves, then, well, really, we're just asking for the big box adventuring stores to roll in and undercut their prices. And then <laughs> oh, we're all left with lower quality uh, uh, items, you know, a magic sword that uh, can't even take Spellstone. It just has a few uses and you throw it away like some disposable thing no no uh, a, a total travesty uh it's a shame it's a shame because the convenience of those uh could be surpassed <laughs> by being able to equip here but alas it sounds like uh this isn't the shop for 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 the demon battles ahead but uh good luck in your endeavors and uh go, go ahead and give me a persuasion check <laughs> natural one Oh boy. Oh my god. Uh, oh my god, he rolled so, a natural one so, also. Uh, what's <laughs> happening? Tess you is like, you, meet it, you, know, you beat think, it, motherfucker. <laughs> Tess is like, you know, I think it might be best if you just both took this somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know that I, uh, I I need this sort of energy in the shop. You know, I'm trying to attract customers here, and this this is getting a little heated. Alas, yes, yes, yes. All right, well, good luck with your your shop, as you call it. And he, he leaves. Uh, but, uh, did you want this uh, anything here? No? <laughs> uh, you head back out into the street, and a few minutes after you leave, uh, Cornelius comes out of the shop, and uh, following along, he says, uh, Oh, wait there, uh, uh, Tess, uh, ah. T Tess, ah. Oh, that's, yes, I'm a member of Tessa, yeah, that's me, I'm Scarpin, Nightholder, nice to meet you. Scarpin, Nightholder, yes, wonderful. Um, look, Scarpin, uh, I've just heard some things in there that you apparently were telling Tess about, uh, uh, your group or whatever, I'd love to hear your story and perhaps, uh, gather it as a collection, uh, for part of my, the, the tales that I tell around. It sounds like maybe there are some great, important things you might be able to share with me. There are lots of important things going on, and it seems like nobody se seems to care. It's a... Oh, well, I care. I'm happy to collect this tale and, and tell it from here to the uh, northern uh, end of prosperity. You know, as far Ellery, as I can travel, I will tell your tale. Ellery, are you sure, like, I'm dressed right for this? Like, should I get a haircut first or anything? Like, Why would you need a haircut just to meet my parents? Well, yeah, I guess, I guess you're right. Uh, <laughs> uh, good point. Uh, oh! Uh, there's Scarpin up there, and he's he's talking to Cornelius. Oh, was he the bard that we met in the tavern that one time? Yeah, yeah. From... The one that told us about all the demons? Yeah. Oh. Wait. No. He just looks so much like him. No. Because yeah, uh, the one that Cornelius told you about the demons was, was in the past. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cornelius oh, yeah. was the one that we met at uh, the Brightest Star. Oh. That one, that one night, uh, it was like a wild night. Yeah, no, 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 I remember now, I remember. I remember that he told us some stories. Um, I just couldn't, you know, the, you know how the nights at the brightest star get. Uh, yeah, sometimes it feels like they're, you know, you experience them for just a little bit and then they're gone and forever. And you too, listener, can not, like, as well. Every third Thursday, we have a tavern <laughs> night where we stream in character fun times. Anyway. Twitch.tv slash SRSBIZ underscore network. But yeah, man, like, we should go see what's going on with them. Uh, sure. Yeah, I guess. Like, just just real quick, you know, before we like meet up with your parents or whatever, it'll be like a good, uh, you know, pre thing. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, at, yeah. As you approach, uh, he suddenly whips around to you and he says, "Ah, look as I, I, the great bard, will present to you one of the great heroes of our day who has been regaling me with his tale. This is a member of Tess Ah, and you will know his name, Scarpin Nightholder, before this year is through. Well, yeah, I better. How you doing, Scarpin? Uh, and Darren puts, like, he puts his arms out for a hug. 
great, great. He gives him a hug. It's Cornelius. He's, he's, he's gonna, I've been telling him our, our adventures in, in their entirety. And already your story spreads so far. You have been noticed and recognized in the street by total strangers. <laughs> Uh, um, yeah, sure. Wow, Scarpin, you've gotten a lot done uh, in the very little time that we've been apart. <laughs> um, we, I mean, all we've done in the past uh, little bit is we stopped for some food because Deeran said he can't meet my parents on an empty stomach. Well, yeah, I and didn't then, wanna, you know, I didn't want to, like, be gurgly. We went into a clothes store because Deeran said that he can't meet my parents with a bloody shirt. <laughs> yeah, that'd be rude. Uh, and then we stopped in another sweets store because... Uh, Deeran said he can't meet my parents without bringing them a present. Right. Imagine, imagine not bringing a present. And then we were almost going to start, stop in a hairdresser store because Deeran said he can't meet my parents with long hair. Look at this mop, man. <laughs> but I think I've talked him out of that one and I think we're finally ready to go see my parents now. Yeah, we just wanted to say hi to Cornelius before we headed over. Ah, yes. Well, uh, to my adoring fans, then I say uh, thank you for coming to see me here in the street. And uh, I'm I'm busy writing my next ballad uh, off the words of this uh, fine adventurer, and you will hear it. Can you give uh, me no a doubt. Preview. So. Well, not yet. I haven't gotten it yet from him. I've just started. Hey, well, any good bard should be able to do something right off the top of their head. Well, okay. Yeah. At the very <laughs> least, uh, could you at least tell us how things are going with Milo? Who, who asked you? Who sent you? <laughs> well, I just, you know, last time we hung out, like it was a, it seemed like a pretty big deal. And I just wanted to make sure everything was good. Cornelius narrows his eyes at you. Then he leans over to Scarpin. He says, have I met them before? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, since the last time we hung out. Yes, of course. How foolish of me. Oh, things are great. Uh, I mean, it's so good to see you again. Uh, it was such, such a, uh, a fun experience the last time we were all spending time together. And I, I'm just, I'm so looking forward to the next time we spend time together that isn't right now. Uh, boy, yeah, no, it, it's been not. so yeah, great. Yeah, we've got somewhere to be as well. Oh, yes, of course. Well, it's, you're you're some of my favorite people, and it's so good to see you again. So good. Uh, I'm, I'm just thrilled to have uh, run into you. Oh, that's a little embarrassing, Cornelius, because I, honestly, I forgot where we had met you. <laughs> yeah, Cornelius, oh. you would never forget, right? No, never, and I take no offense to that. Don't worry, my dear. You're, you're fine. <laughs> Uh, okay. but, uh, you know, a lesser man might be a little offended, I think, but I, I understand that you're a busy person, you're a great adventurer, you have many things, uh, you know, going on, and, and you can appreciate that sometimes people who meet a lot of people have a hard time placing people. Uh, mm -hmm. so you get that, and, and, and there's no, no worries, of course. Well, thanks, Cornelius, it's been great. Good um, luck doing the thing you do, and, uh, I'm you. sure we'll see each other again. Okay, bye. Come on. All come right. On, yeah, Deeran. no, I'm, com I'm coming. Uh, <laughs> uh, Deeran's palms are so sweaty. Like he he wipes them on the front of his cloak, and like it leaves like a like a wet mark. You know. <laughs> uh, Bill Roth, you arrive <laughs> at the library. Mm -hmm. uh, you uh, as you come in, the library is large Ooh. and pretty much empty. Uh, except, yeah, it's actually a very impressively large library uh the it's it's very large and it's largely empty except for the librarian uh who is a tiefling oh um hello uh my name is belroth beacon i am a, a professor of chimerology i would like to see your Shh. Um. <laughs> do you have a chimerology section chimerology Chimerology. Well, uh, yes, there is a pseudoscience section toward the back not... of the library if you want to. Uh, what about a beast, uh, a beast diary kind of the the sort of the 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 texts of taxonomy and? Oh yes, we have some great works produced by the Black Scale on uh, all matters of uh, bestiary of of the taxonomy of creatures and and biology. Yes. Wait. So in this world, this is Rob. In this world, is like chimerology, like chiropractic. Like some people are like, <laughs> are like, yeah, my doctor referred me to a chiropractor, 
but it's still technically a pseudoscience. Like, is that it's still quackery? Yeah, uh, I think that it's not common because the creatures are not common. like as prevalent, right? I just want to know if so, Roth should be offended or not. If, if or if, I think a little, okay, right? Good. Because I, you've done real work <laughs> with real creatures and that aren't like you know normal or typical. Like, there's definitely weird stuff happening, mm-hmm. uh, but everybody dismisses it because like. They've never, yeah. The skeleton that you that that cat with that you glued bat wings to, like okay, dog, you know. Uh, so, yeah, sure, sure, yeah. sure. People think people think Belroth is making up jackalopes, <laughs> <laughs> and it's uh. <laughs> so. Well, okay, so he finds out that one the pseudoscience section as well as the actual science section. <laughs> um cuz he he would like to do research on uh the creature that he talked about with the um court of beggars. He wants to do a little bit of that. I'll I'll message. Okay, and then roll me a d100 and uh tell me the result of that also. Okie dokie. Um a d100. That's a d20. That's not it. Roll that 5 times. No, Roll that's that not the same. Bean footage. Um, eighty nine. <laughs> okay. So you start to dig into uh, the information you're looking for on unicorns. Yes. Uh, what you are able to you are able to gather a lot of information about unicorns. Some of it is, uh, you know, pseudo myth. Yeah, uh, I'm, some of it. I'm imagining that there's like a there's like a big chimerologist name who's like he's really pinned his whole career on like he's studied a lot of unicorns, but he still perpetuates the myth that they only present themselves to like the pure of heart, like that kind of guy. <laughs> right. He's like he's got like right. extensive taxonomy, but he's like, but you must remember, children. And it's like fuck off, Michael. Like this isn't. <laughs> you're the reason no one trusts us. <laughs> like. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, well, I mean, there's a lot of myth around unicorns. One of the things you mentioned, right, is that this this idea of purity, this idea of uh, uh, that they are, like, antithetical to evil in some way, you know, what, however you define that. Rolling his um, eyes, but still writing it down. Right. There is the, uh, there are concepts that they are, um, you know, difficult to find and difficult to track because they have some way of evaluating those who seek them. Mm -hmm. Uh, But there is also talk within it of the magical properties of a unicorn. Mm -hmm. Things like a unicorn's horn being used as a stand in for any material component for any spell. Okay. Or ritual. Okay. that a unicorn horn can be that material component and provide power. And any sort of information on locations, habitats, where they might be found, things like that. Yeah, the the stuff that you see most commonly puts them uh, in the northern half of the empire. Uh, historically, like way historically, they would have been in the uh, creatures in the untamed forest. However, there has not been any... Um, uh, sightings in the untamed forest in a very long time okay uh more recently they would have been in the uh sort of that middle band of the empire near like Mughamar and ashland uh but in the northeastern uh the northern and eastern forests along that band okay northern and eastern both the northern and eastern yep 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 yeah okay and um he'll He'll like kind of do some research on that. Um, he's always on the lookout for anything about demons if the, something catches his eye. Um, but that's not necessarily his objective. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think probably with how wh- the way that you rolled on that, like you were pretty laser focused today yeah. on uh, unicorns. Sure, sure, sure. Un- unicorns. Unicorns. Oh God. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, so for uh, Deeran and Ellery. Uh, you arrive at the, uh, the location that you know that your parents are, have like basically refugeed up in, um, and for the time being, your grandmother told you about the tavern or the inn that she sent them to, uh, and the small room that they have there. Okay. Um, should we, should we have someone send a note up or should we just go up to their room? 
Um, <clears throat> I don't know. I've never, I've never met my parents in a strange place before. What if they're not? I've never met your parents in a strange place before either. <laughs> Let's just go up. Let's oh. just go, go up and knock on the door. To see the surprise on their face is going to be amazing. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, and Deeran follows behind, uh, like three or four steps behind. Okay. Uh, yeah, you head up into the hallway. Uh, the, it heads to the upstairs area where the rooms are in this inn. Um, uh, and the long hallway, there are only four rooms off of their, this hallway. Uh, once but... we hit the hallway, Deeran reflexively casts mage armor on himself without thinking. <laughs> like it just happens. <laughs> <laughs> Deeran, what are you? What? Oh, huh. uh, that's weird. Uh, and he like shakes it off. Uh, <laughs> They're not going to hurt you, Deeran. No, I know. He just I makes know. it invisible. It's still there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, she knocks. One minute. Uh, after just like a, a couple of seconds, your mother opens the door. Uh, and uh, Fail Rayatnam is standing across from you. And she uh, gets just like her eyes go wide. And she says, Ellery. Hi, Mom. She wraps herself around you in a hug. Yeah, same. Ellery cries a little bit. Oh, yeah. Uh, so does Fail. Uh, um, Mom, you'll never believe what's happened. Um, This is my friend Deeran. Um, is Dad here too? Oh, he's not in right now. He's out. Uh, well, he's he's been doing some odd jobs for us to, to support us well before we can head back to the village. <gasps> oh, that's so exciting. Well, hopefully he will, you know, be back. So maybe we can go uh, downstairs, get some snacks. I'm sure Deeran's you know, hungry. Um, you haven't been back to the village, have you, dear? Yes, we did. We were there oh, and no. we got, we saw grandma and we killed a demon. I'm, I'm sorry, what? Yeah, no, it's a really long story. Um, also, you might want to patch some things up with Maya and Brad um, when you get back because they're going to be, so I told, I told Ellery her she's Rialdum, you're supposed to be out getting a story, not killing demons and fighting things. What are you thinking? Well, I'm thinking that makes a pretty good story, Mom. Yeah, but you're going to get hurt out there. You can't be oh, running around out there. Oh, I've almost died so many times. <laughs> Don't tell me that. Yeah, you're not supposed to say that, Ellery. Well, no, it's it just, but it's true. I wouldn't, I can't lie to my mom. Well, no, I don't want you to lie. I also don't want you to get killed. I mean, mostly safe. Yeah, no, uh, I've got some really great friends that I've met. Um, there's, you know, there's Belroth and he's really good at, you know, knowing a lot of things about, about animals and creatures and, you know, is this one of your Scarpin friends out there letting you get killed? No, no, but no, but Scarpin's so good at, I mean, at dreams. Uh, and then and then Deeran here, Deeran's super good at like thinking about all the things in connection. And then and then he he he's the reason that I didn't die this last time. Yeah, with like the we're demon. doing our best, you know. Uh, it's it's spicy out there though. Uh. I I think that's it, Ellery. I think you got to come back to the village. No more. You've got enough of a story now. It's no, time. No, no. No, Mom, we have so much. We've got seven more demons to kill. No, no. Yeah. No. You can't, Mom, you can't be we're... doing that. Leave that to other people to do. You okay, come home and tend other... to the sheep. No, Mom, we're... I, Mom, I met the, the heart of creation and he told me I was special. Okay. All right. I see what's happening here. Ellery. No, and, and we're she... contractually obligated. Hold on. Uh, she t she like... takes your hand. She says, Ellery. You're supposed to be finding a story, not making up a story. It's not about going out there and just coming up with the most outlandish tale you can and coming back to the village. You gotta go out there and find a real story, something personal. M Mom, look at this note from Grandma. It sh she sent it to me. You know how she feels about the stone hearts, the stout hearts. And she sent this letter to prove that we killed a demon to them. She believes me. It's all true. Okay, dear. Let's go downstairs and get something. We rode here on a dragon, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> Ellery, that's enough. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Dragons. My goodness. Uh, she's, come on, come on. And she just like walks down the stairs in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um yeah <laughs> uh 
Uh, Cornelius buys you uh, your fourth round, Scarpin, uh, as he's just like uh, just getting every as much of the story as he can from you. Is there anything you aren't telling Cornelius? No, Scarpin's gonna tell him every every detail. Um, yeah, every every detail. <laughs> Even the stuff we're not supposed to say. What are we not supposed to say? <laughs> <laughs> the standing stones. <laughs> What? Yeah, the thing that Deeran fucked up early. That, is that a thing somebody said we weren't supposed to say? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Wesley. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he said, "Well, that's too bad." Now Corn- Cornelius knows. Good God. Oh jeez. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, what about the going back in time? That was fine. Uh, Archimedes didn't say anything about that. That's that's true. I guess. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> that one I'll give you, but the there was a very clear standing. Don't tell people about this standing stones. <laughs> oh well, that's fair. You can tell Scarpin that later. Cornelius has been taking. Uh, at first, he was taking mental notes. Now he's just full on writing it all out. Uh, <laughs> he's like, "This is this story is unbelievable. There's uh, so much." Uh, truly, if I had not seen the things I had seen in this world, I would simply not believe a word of what you had said. Uh, uh, and I'm honestly finding it difficult as it is. And then then I, I was unconscious for this part, but they stared directly into the pit of demons. And I oh, I got chills even did. though I was unconscious. Well, wait, you got chills then? Uncon- like you had unconscious chills? Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's the pit of demons. It's 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 the end all. It's the where they come from and where we have to go. We are gonna go there, Cornelius. Like, like now? No, we're not ready. Oh, we, I mean, from what you've told me, that seems like it would have been a terrible decision. Terrible. Yeah, we barely survived Old Scratch, and now we're in my territory. Yes, let Old Scratch uh, send him away. Great. If you have to go there and deal with him in the future, so be it. But maybe you'll have the opportunity to uh, bring some more uh, help with you into the pit that you don't have to go there alone. Yeah, yeah, well, as much support as we can. I mean, that shopkeep old Tess over there, there were no help. I was trying to get suited up and outfitted with some fancy magic items. <clears throat> now, the truth is, for Tess, if you go on Wednesdays, it is uh, the quietest day of business for her, she will give you a 3% discount. Oh, well, that's something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, th- thanks for that tip, Cornelius. But can you uh, can you believe it? Is, 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 uh, wh- have you seen... Uh, I know I told you a lot here, but are, are there other happenings in the world that I didn't even mention that you've seen? Oh, yes, yes. The barrier is a big one in this area, especially, that they have been dealing with. It, it is said that there were ships visible on the horizon, a fleet of them, making their way from the Demon Isles. Uh, when the Demon Stone shattered, it caused such a commotion that the, uh, the whole islands were evacuating. And when the, the ships were inches from passing through the barrier, they, they said they saw at least three of them cleaved in half by the barrier, sunk oh. away into the ocean, and the others trapped inside. Oh no! The the, uh, the uh, prudence said that there was no no refugees. So there oh. has also been a great attack to the north in the north, across the uh, uh, in the empire, uh, an attack upon the the ancient keep of Merevia. It is said that 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 building now is the domain of vampires who have taken hold, and the knights there are not safe. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for that one too. It is possible that the uh, this Nosferat that you have mentioned, this this demon, I believe it is probably connected. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> like, like Scarvin's not impressed with this great traveler adventure storyteller. <laughs> And of like... course, there is the recent <laughs> capture of the prince of the Triton. Oh, he has been <laughs> taken into custody by the Empire. See, that's a new—that's a new one. I didn't know about that one. 
Yes, yes. The Prince of the Triton has been uh, captured, For we'll say, although there is some rumor that he has defected from his father. Interesting. Yeah, well, it could, could spell an end to the war soon. That'd be great. We don't want to be divided on two fronts. We could use the Emperor's help. Yes, and of course, there are also the rumors about how this whole Triton War began in the first place. They say the secret to that lies at the bottom of the ocean of the Eastern Sea, near the Tower of Varai, if I am not mistaken. The Tritons say that there was a sacred place disrupted by Silverblade and his crew. Huh, I'll have to ask Silverblade about that. I bet, I bet he knows something. That you would be doing at your own risk. You uh, so said that Silverblade does... Oh, okay. I mean, we mentioned him in your story, obviously. But it is said that Silverblade does not take kindly to those who pry into his business. Uh, well, you know, we're, we're on good terms, but th thanks for the warning, Cornelius. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll have one, just one more round, just one more. <laughs> and of course, his brother is an expert duelist. One would not want to find themselves on either side, uh, uh, to anger either side of the Silverblade family. No, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, we met we met him too. Well, briefly, um, but they say his blade is so fast he can draw it and slay someone without you ever seeing it drawn. That the blade itself, it's like it strikes invisibly. They call it the unseen blade. Weird. Well, that's uh, that sounds like. Made up. No, certainly. I would believe that as well, if I had not seen the effects of it myself. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, maybe we'll ask him about that too, but... Oh, a lot going on, Cornelius. Uh, do, do you think you, you have enough uh, information to write some, some ballads and spread the word? Ah, yes, I will tell the tale of Tess, ah. Uh, and all of your exploits in fighting the... Uh, the Whisperer of Lies. I think that a uh, an interesting uh, title that should should really get people excited and interested in this tale. Yeah, and, and hopefully, uh, uh, you know, take it seriously because uh, some people aren't. Of course, of course, of course. Yes, yes. I'm I'm very concerned about the veracity of the story as well, uh, and so I will embellish as little as possible. I would hate to uh, change things too drastically, but there are some parts I'm going to have to punch up a little bit. I find them, uh, you know, the story as you've related, you know, it needs a little uh, extra in a couple of places. Okay, I, I try I trust you implicitly. So, you know. like, I'm thinking that perhaps I will just replace most of the characters you've mentioned here um uh maybe with some other more famous adventurers that have uh, a history uh with my listeners that that might uh you know resonate better as i tell them in taverns um uh, okay uh, well i guess as long as the the demon information is out there is, uh, i guess that's the most important part Yes, yes, I, I can tell how uh, Rothgar Swordbreaker, the brave, uh, t drew forth his sword and threw it as hard as he could at the demon uh, as it disappeared through a portal into the pit as a warning to all demons uh, that, that might see his blade as it pierced its way into the ground, shining brightly and uh, pushing back all demons for a hundred miles within the pit, cracking the glass itself. You know, things like that. Uh, that does, yeah, that does so sound better. Belros arrow launched right behind the demon as a warning. And oh my gosh, uh, Mrs. Rialtonum, it was amazing. It was like the coolest thing. Oh yes, yes, that's that's so so wonderful, um, dear. And Ellery, I, I really think maybe at the very least, some other companions might be uh, in order here to to, to really uh, to really help keep you focused. It sounds like maybe there's a lot of. Um, uh, you know, says some scattered uh, uh, thoughts happening uh, with this particular uh, group. No, Mom, there's no group of people, not even famous adventurers that could, you know, take the place of, of Deeran and Belleroth and Scarfin and, and Freya. And because we work so well together, I think that's part of the reason that we're all still alive. Because, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not really, I'm not good at, you know, 
you know, Deeran can throw a fireball and, and you know, yes, someone can yes. just explode right there and I can't do that. But, right. But yeah, I, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, no, but, but I'd rather have Ellery by my side than Grognar. You know what I mean? Like, I just, I feel so supported and like protected with her around. Like, and she's I'm got saying such that a, she can support and protect you from here, right? Uh, just, just with the uh, no, her thoughts and No, my spells don't reach feelings. that far, Mom. Well, uh, well, okay, but uh, I mean, I, you know, it is that you are, uh, you know, of only so much use in a situation like that. No, I know, but I'm getting better. Um, you want to see something that I can do that's really cool? I don't, I, I mean, I... Uh, Think of anything you want in the world. Anything you want. I want you to stay home. Uh. Okay, think of anything that's like medium size and <laughs> um, worth less than 600 gold pieces. I think about know. that. Um, let's say uh, some teeth. You want some teeth? Oh, I'm, I'm good at that one. Okay. <laughs> I've got a pricking on the tips of my fingers. I've got an image in the back of my brain where there was nothing. Let there be something. Show me new teeth. <laughs> oh, five by five cube well, look at of that. teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Just like a splay out on the table. That way less a... than last time. <laughs> yeah, oh, way less. Yes. Uh, yeah, we need to be very clear. Far fewer teeth, but still teeth. Yeah. Just, just teeth. Still too, <laughs> still too many teeth. <laughs> oh, this is well. Um, first of See, all, I'm I'm pretty sure there are companies with trademarks against just making piles of magical teeth. Uh, but uh, yeah, even beyond that, uh, this is an interesting... Do you use these? Like, So I feel like Belroth here, but uh, actually these are mundane teeth uh, created by magical means. Uh, so it's like, you know, it's a little different. Well... You know, I'm no member of the guild, but, uh, uh, you know, I can see where the differentiation comes in there, but I don't know how that's classified legally. I mean, it's, you know, it's it's magic, so I, I think it's extra legal. Well, yeah, I don't know if it's so extra legal. legal or not legal at all. I don't know which. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I've got a lot of really cool things I can do, Mum. And and I know that it. I know that you're probably worried about me, but I am. I'm but, just worried. We we both are. Your father is too, and we just we just want you to be safe. And I've been I've been just wringing my hands since you left. And your grandmother keeps telling me, you know, you, you can't walk a path that you haven't laid some thorns or something. I don't remember <laughs> what she said exactly, but uh, I just know that I'm very. I just want you to come home, dear. I just miss you. No, I know. I miss you too. I miss you and dad so much, but mom, mom, there's some really bad stuff happening in the world and, and we can fix it. Uh, the door opens and your father, Caghan, uh, comes in through the door. Uh, he's carrying two large buckets of, uh, like, of, looks like grain. Um, and he's like, all right, home for the day. And, she, and your mother says, look who's here. And he looks down and he Dad. says, Hi, Ellery. And he just walks past up toward the <laughs> stairs. Hi. Hey, Dad. He'll be down in a minute. It, it just it didn't click with him, I'm sure. It's been a long day at work. Yeah. Um. Hey, I know it's super rude and weird. Uh, you don't need to, like, work if you don't want to, like... I'm sure, you know, like we could we could toss you a couple of gold or whatever to like put you up here for as long as you need. Well, dear, and oh. I was just thinking that, but also they can go home now. Yeah, and, and really, Kagan just needs something to do. He can't sit around for oh, days yeah, dear, and you don't even understand. There was there was a week when I was little that you know he he broke his foot and it you know he couldn't do his dancing. And when he couldn't dance, he couldn't, you know, that was the the main thing that he was supposed to do. So so there was no way for him to do it. And he just had to sit around the house. And in order to heal, you know, he had to um, be really restful and he couldn't, he wasn't allowed to do anything. And oh my gosh, he's the grumpiest I, I've ever seen him. And he'd get so, he'd get so worked up. He'd sleep like seven hours a night and it just wasn't enough. No. <laughs> No, it's like it's like he was a walking zombie, you know, to yeah. add to the vampire, he was a zombie too. Yeah. But not literally. 
No, not no. literally. Right. That was a metaphorical. Sure, something. yeah. So yeah. he's been doing some work here just to keep his strength up and keep his mind busy before he can get home and back, back to dancing. We figured it was probably best not to do any dancing here because uh, it'd be too up. Like, we might, people might recognize him. And we're trying to be yeah, hiding. Yeah, he's so famous. Yeah. He comes back um, downstairs. He's like, Ellery! Dad! <laughs> and he runs over and hugs you. Yeah, yeah. Dad, this is Deeran. I've just been telling Mom all the things that we've been up to. No, I bet it's been fantastic. It has been. No, oh, I how bet you're you? getting the best stories out there. I am. Oh, you, I'm, how am I? Oh, you know how I am. I'm just lifting grain. I've been lifting yeah, grain well, all day. <laughs> here's a good. <laughs> That's <here's>, my job. <laughs> grain here's lifter. Here's the good news, though, that you and mom can go home. Oh. We, f- we fixed the problem in Naya. Well, good. That's good. You know, I've been thinking yeah. maybe we wouldn't. Go home? Uh-oh. Yeah. It's it's just the neighbors. I'm really not a fan of the neighbors, and I'm really well, hoping that... You might have to move when you go home anyway. I was I was pretty cruel. Um, I, it's not my proudest moment, but I did I did tell Maya she was bad at cooking. Mm. That's fair. Yeah. It was pretty awesome. <laughs> she was not uh, happy. Your mother is aghast. Uh, she, I know you've already told me that once, but every time you bring it up, it just hits a little harder. And I, oh. yeah, it was a pretty big deal. Uh, she sounded really mad on the other end of the door. I, I, I don't know what we're gonna do. Well, maybe we will stay. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we're up and moving rather than <laughs> dealing with this conflict. Like my mom. Um. <laughs> Anthony, Jesus. <laughs> what would like a house cost? What would like a nice little house cost? A nice little house? I would say probably a hundred gold. Okay. Um. Well, if you... that's a great, man, economies are so fucked up in D&D. Yeah, um, I know. <laughs> we'll say 50 gold. That feels like okay. an, a, an appropriate amount for a, a So peasant. less than a horse? Ooh. A hundred gold. We'll go back to a hundred gold. Okay. <laughs> Two horses. <laughs> you set the you set the bar for horses at seventy five. So a hundred and fifty gold is what we're gonna go. <laughs> it's a sliding scale. I mean, it's also the, the housing market on... is volatile as hell right now. I mean, right now. you're in a city, so it's gotta like go up a little, right? Two hundred and fifty yeah, yeah. gold is what <laughs> you're paying for convenience. Where we've landed. Is what we're hearing. Five horses. That's what I've said the whole time. <laughs> well, if if you wanted to stay here, um. You know, I, I could buy you a house. Oh, no, dear. You don't need to do that. We oh, I we know. settled just fine. I know. I just, I was thinking maybe since I've got my, you know, big success girl pants on that maybe, <laughs> um, you know, that I, you know, can contribute in, in a way. Well, if I can start dancing again, then I, I think we could get a house here in no time. Oh yeah, you would you would get a house and meet someone would just give you a house for the dancing you do. Well, I don't know about that, but uh, that's very I kind do. of you. But I don't think I've ever danced well enough to get a house. Uh, oh, I, but that's I could where try. we disagree, Dad. Oh, uh, I mean, I I feel like I've danced well enough to deserve a house, but I don't know if I've danced well enough to earn a house. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's a proper distinction. I'll give it a try. Uh, I I think we'll be okay, Ellery. You keep what you have for yourself that's a lot of gold and i wouldn't want to put you out for anything like that that would be an enormous amount of money yeah, it's, it's like uh, 275 gold for a house so in the city <laughs> so so like what my parents used to do for me to like make me feel like i had earned it uh was they used to put a bill on the ice box and so like every time i got money from like uh you know like my allowance or like uh, doing a job or whatever, like uh, I could pay back that bill uh, off the ice box, and like they would they would reduce my payment uh, based on that you know that bill there. Uh, oh. It was like a way to show responsibility. Like if if the like upfront cost is something that she could help me out with, you know maybe you, you could do it that way. Oh dear, that's the saddest thing I ever heard. Uh, well, I'll tell you why. why. Wait, why? <laughs> I learned a lot about the value of uh, buying stuff. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, we'll be okay, dear. Don't worry about us. We'll either head back home or maybe we'll 
just sell the home and <laughs> and use the money to buy something here. Or, the, the, we got lots of options. Okay. I know Gran would like to see you, though. You know, if you are if you are heading back. Oh, yeah. Well, we'll at least go back and visit her. Okay. Um... We'll come, we'll, we'll come back to visit too. Yeah, you um, can come back Brandon to Thomas stay. Pizza. No, just you can come back and stay. And everyone else can, can visit and then they can leave and you can tend to the sheep. Honestly, the amount that this is like, the number of times my actual parents have been like, you can just move here. You can just come live ne- near us. You know, you can just live here. Uh, like, what up, Katie? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, like... She doesn't listen anymore. It got too confusing for her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, fair enough. <laughs> but she'll like the shit out of anything we post on Facebook. <laughs> listeners you should too yeah Yeah. (laughs) um but yeah uh ellery's gonna like just kind of do a lot of like uh uh uh-huh nodding um (laughs) kagan's like she's not coming back to live with us she's finding her story she's out there getting her tail and it sounds like it's gonna be a big one yeah yeah, it is. I haven't heard any of it, but it sounds like it's going to be a big one. And Dad, honestly, I don't want to hear any here. of it now. I want to wait till you get the whole thing all okay. together and you give it to me all at both. once. Okay. I'm excited, though. Cool. She's like, she's almost died several times. He's like, spoilers. Don't Mom, tell don't me anything. <laughs> I don't want to hear a single bit. <laughs> Hey everyone, DM Anthony here, just reminding you that if you're enjoying the show, tell your friends. Tell your family, uh, let people know, word of mouth, and you can support the show at patreon.com slash adventuring, or you can check out the shop at adventuringpod.com slash shop. Make sure you check the show notes and the website for all our social media, including our Discord, where you can come and hang out with some great people. We'll see you there. And until next week, I wish you nothing but critical success. Serious business.